A vast, wind-beaten plain. Endless horizons stretching from the icy steppes of Central Asia to the scorching, sun-baked lands of the Indian subcontinent. For centuries, these worlds seemed separate, divided by mountains, cultures, and time itself. Yet beneath the soil, in forgotten graves and shattered bones, an ancient link has been quietly waiting, a connection no one saw coming. It starts with a whisper of DNA, fragments so old they barely cling to existence. But within those fragments lies a story, one that could upend everything we thought we knew about the origins of South Asian civilization. A story of migration, invasion, and integration. How did nomadic horsemen from the frozen north leave their genetic fingerprint deep within the heart of India? And what does this mean for the story of one of the world's oldest continuous cultures? The answers have remained buried for over 4,000 years. Until now. Could ancient DNA finally reveal the hidden connection between India and the fierce steppe nomads? The timeline begins over 4,000 years ago. The Indus Valley civilization, sophisticated, urban, and remarkably advanced, flourished along the riverbanks of what is now Pakistan and northwest India. Its cities had drainage systems, standardized weights, and undeciphered scripts carved into stone. Meanwhile, far to the north, across the vast Eurasian steppe, tribes of nomadic warriors roamed on horseback, expert archers, cattle herders, and chariot makers. These were the Yamnaya, the Sintashta, the Andronovo, cultures that left behind burial mounds, weapons, and a genetic legacy stretching from Europe to Mongolia. But for decades, scholars saw India as a world apart, a cradle of civilization seemingly untouched by the migrations that shaped Europe and Central Asia. That view is now crumbling. In the last decade, a revolution in archaeogenetics has begun to redraw the human map. And at the center of it lies a provocative question. Did the Indo-Aryan languages, ancient Sanskrit, and even parts of the Indian gene pool come from those northern horsemen? The scale of the implications is massive, linguistic, cultural, and political. But only hard science could prove it. And the first clues would emerge not from texts or temples, but from a forgotten graveyard lost in the dust. In 2018, a team of archaeologists unearthed something extraordinary in the remote plains of modern-day Kazakhstan. Buried beneath layers of earth and time, they discovered a kurgan, a burial mound filled with human remains, weapons, and ornaments dated to nearly 4,000 years ago. But it wasn't the chariots or bronze daggers that made headlines. It was the teeth. From just a few molars, Scientists extracted traces of ancient DNA, perfectly preserved by the cold steppe soil. These were the remains of the Sintashta culture, a warlike nomadic society believed to be ancestors of Indo-European-speaking peoples. At the same time, thousands of kilometers south, another discovery was unfolding. In Rakigari, India, once a major city of the Indus Valley civilization, Researchers uncovered a female skeleton buried in a simple grave. No weapons, no chariots, just silence and bones. Yet her DNA, too, was intact. For the first time, two ancient genomes, one from the icy steppe, the other from the subcontinent, would be analyzed side by side. And what they revealed would challenge history books across continents. Could the roots of Indian identity be intertwined with nomadic warriors from the far north? To uncover the truth, scientists turned to the cutting edge of archaeogenetics. At Harvard Medical School and the Max Planck Institute, teams of geneticists, linguists, and archaeologists began collaborating on an unprecedented scale. They extracted ancient DNA from over 500 individuals across Central Asia, Iran, and the Indian subcontinent, painstakingly comparing genetic markers, mitochondrial lineages, 
and Y chromosome haplogroups. But the process wasn't easy. The tropical climate of South Asia makes DNA preservation almost impossible, turning every successful extraction into a scientific miracle. Meanwhile, the interpretation of this data was fraught with tension. Linguistic scholars debated the timing of Indo-Aryan language spread. Historians warned of the political sensitivities tied to migration theories, and cultural institutions were reluctant to let science rewrite sacred narratives. Still, the data kept coming. Across grave after grave, a pattern began to emerge, one that showed a clear influx of steppe ancestry into India around 2000 BCE. It wasn't overwhelming, but it was undeniable, especially in the male Y chromosome data, a signal that matched the genetic profile of the Sintashta and Andronovo cultures, those same nomadic horsemen from the north. But could this genetic footprint prove a migration? Or was it something else? The breakthrough came when the team analyzed haplogroup R1A1A, a genetic signature long associated with Indo-European populations. This lineage appeared with startling frequency in male remains from the steppe and began to show up centuries later in northern India. But the real surprise? The Indian variant was nearly identical to the one found in the Sintashta culture, not the earlier European branches. This pointed to a direct migration route from the steppe into the subcontinent around 1800 BCE. Not only did this genetic trail match the movement of chariot technology and Indo-Aryan language patterns, it also aligned with ancient Vedic texts describing migrations and conquest. Even more compelling was the absence of steppe ancestry in the female genome from Rakigari, suggesting the Indus Valley population predated the arrival of the steppe nomads. This wasn't replacement. It was fusion. The DNA confirmed a dramatic yet complex encounter, where migrating groups from the north intermingled with native South Asian populations, leaving behind not just genes, but culture, language, and myth. The echoes of this meeting still resonate in the modern Indian genome. It was no longer just a theory. It was written in the bones. Picture this. Around 1800 BCE, waves of horse-drawn chariots appear on the northwestern borders of the Indian subcontinent. The riders speak a language foreign to the cities of the Indus, but carry stories, songs, and gods that will soon echo across centuries. These steppe nomads, descendants of the Sintashta and Andronovo, are not conquerors in the traditional sense. They don't storm fortified cities. Instead, they merge, they settle, they marry. And through generations, their language, an early form of Sanskrit, takes root. Rituals evolve. Sacred hymns are composed and preserved orally for centuries before being written as the Rigveda. The newcomers bring with them new technologies, the chariot, the horse, and advanced metallurgy. But they also absorb the knowledge of the land they now call home, the astronomy, the agriculture, the deep spiritual traditions. This cultural symbiosis gives birth to the Vedic civilization, laying the foundations for much of what we now recognize as Indian identity. Temples replace mud brick cities, myths merge, pantheons shift, and in the genetic code of today's South Asians, the trace of that ancient encounter still pulses, half buried, half remembered. This was not invasion. This was transformation. The past doesn't speak in words. It whispers through bones, languages, and the bloodlines we carry. The story of India and the steppe nomads isn't one of conquest or purity, but of entanglement. A fusion of civilizations that reshaped an entire region and echoed through millennia. Ancient DNA has lifted the veil on a forgotten chapter, revealing that the roots of modern India stretch far beyond the subcontinent, across the wind-swept grasslands of the Eurasian steppe. Today, in every prayer chanted in Sanskrit, 
In every epoch passed down through generations, in the very genomes of millions, this hidden connection lives on. And this is just one mystery among many still buried beneath our feet. What other secrets lie dormant, waiting for science to uncover them? What forgotten links between worlds remain to be revealed? If this story fascinated you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell so you never miss another deep dive into the past. Because here, every bone has a story. And every story changes everything.